Today we're making real French bread using salt, flour, and water. We, oui. je t'aime. As with all bread, ingredients are silly simple. Here's some regular white bread flour with a protein content of 12%. Super accessible and not snobbish. You can use any yeast, but the sourdough starter is the path you want to take. Here's my simple rye starter. I have a video for it and I'll link it at the end of this video. There's a recipe in the description for using regular mm, store-bought yeast. Delicious. Using the method in this video. Water just needs to be clean and drinkable. And finally a bit of salt. In a bowl goes 260 grams of water. If you want to avoid tears, please use scales. Add 100 grams sourdough starter or whichever yeast you're using. Amounts for those below, remember? Mix with your little mitten until fully dissolved. Next, add 450 grams of flour and mix to combine. Using whatever, a dough mixer, your hands, a stick, a special sourdough mixer. Go wild. There's no need to knead dough. Get it? Need to need? <laughs> anyway, we're not going to get messed up with gluten and all that. Just be happy that you won't have sore arms and a sweaty forehead. When that's all nicely combined, just cover it up with a damp cloth or plastic wrap. While the flour hydrates, you add 20 grams of water to 15 grams of salt and dissolve it. With your finger if you wish. After 45 minutes, you add this salty water to your dough. Work it in well, making sure you end up with a homogenous dough again. By all means, do it in a stand mixer if you want. We add it after just to make sure the flour hydrates properly. But this is by no means a must and very much personal preference. Plenty of bakers just throw the whole lot together from the start and some also add the starter at this stage only. Let me know in the comments your preferred method. Oil up your hands slightly and give the dough a few slaps and folds on the workbench just to start building a bit of structure. You can do this by stretching and folding too. No difference, all ends the same way. Lightly shape it into a tight ball, then oil your bowl and add the dough to it. Cover with plastic or seal tight, however you want. Let the dough rest for 45 minutes to an hour. Repeat the slappy folds or stretch and folds if you don't like slapping. Shape it into a ball using your hands or a dough scraper. Pop it into a bowl, cover again and repeat twice more. Resting for about 45 minutes. Working the structure, then covering and resting. During this time, the dough should ferment and become airy and bubbly. Lightly flour your bench and dump your dough onto it. Depending on your oven size, you want to divide the dough into smaller pieces. I divide my dough into four and weigh it out just to make sure the weight is about even. In this case, and in most home ovens, about 200 grams a piece is good. Before we get to the unnecessarily dreaded shaping of a get part, we do a quick pre-shape. It's optional, but again, personal preference, and you may choose to skip it and just shape it straight away. Anyways, to the pre-shape. Just gently flatten the pieces out a bit, but don't smash out all the air. Get it into a roughly rectangular shape, then just fold over and push it back into itself. Flip it around, then repeat from the other side. Building tension and shape without tearing the dough is the purpose of all this. And to get a sausage shape, of course. Fold it close and push forward keeping tension, but taking care not to go too far and rip the dough. Close the seam with your thumb or palm, whichever is logical for the size of your baguettes and hands. Gently roll between your thumbs and fingers and make sure the shape is that of a fat sausage, but don't apply any pressure at this point. Put to the side for a 30 minute bench rest under a damp cloth or plastic wrap. Meanwhile, you prepare a tray with a push however you say it, or any sturdy material. Dust it generously with a 50-50 mix of flour and semolina, or rice flour. After the bench rest, your little pillows are now ready for their final shaping. Repeat the process of gently patting the dough into a rectangle. Lightly fold and press forward into itself, folding over the dough as you go along. Make sure to keep tension, but not to tear it. Close the seam with your thumb or palm. Pinch it close to make sure it's even and straight. Gently roll from the center to the outsides, increasing pressure towards the ends. Very much like a two-year-old rolling out Play-Doh. It's that simple. The best way to pick up this dough is with a wooden or cardboard peel wrapped in plastic. But if you're careful, you can do it with your hands too. Gently transfer the dough to your couche with the seam side facing up. Also, don't be stingy on dusting. If it sticks, tears will follow. Repeat the shaping and with every new addition, adjust the couche to the dough. So the pieces are all plus minus evenly spaced out. There's two ways of going about proving these. Either cover with a damp cloth, proof at room temp and bake when ready, or cover with plastic and overnight proof in the fridge. My preferred method, of course. Depending on your fridge temp, it might take quicker, it might take longer. Go to sleep and have some sweet dreams. The next day, remove your dough from the fridge and let it set out at room temp for an hour or so to finish proving. Prepare your oven as follows. Your home oven will do a much better job than this professional oven at getting that beautiful ear on the bread because... 
Nonetheless, this is what we have, so we roll with it. You place the cast iron pan into the bottom, a baking stone on the middle tray, and another deep tray at the top. Whack your oven on full, but do not use ventilation. Let it heat up for at least 30 minutes. When heated, pour boiling water into the bottom pan. By using already boiling water, you get instant steam. Breaks my head how people still use ice cubes and stuff. Same goes for the top pan or tray. Close the oven and let it get steamy. Next up, you optionally need a spray bottle with water and something to slush the baguettes with. A razor blade is the most popular choice, of course. They're cheap, sharp, and you can stick them into this thing called a lame, meaning blade in French. So you don't circumcise your fingers. Before we slash, let's check if the bread is proven properly, by way of poke test. If you press gently and it slightly springs back, it's ready. If it springs back fully, prove some more. If it collapses, you overdone it. One thing I like to do is to pop the dough back into the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes. It makes slashing much easier. Here we have a cheap piece of cardboard and a baking paper so we can slide the bread onto the stone. And again, that makeshift peel that costed us absolutely zero money. Get your dough onto the pieces of baking paper and make sure they are spaced out evenly. Remove any excess dusting flour if necessary. If your oven or baking trays are tiny, then obviously adjust and bake it in batches or use multiple trays. You can make one long lengthwise cut or you can go diagonally across. The choice is yours. Angle your blade slightly and only cut with a pointed tip. Make quick confident slashes. Slash your bread slightly overlapping the cuts and plus minus keeping them within the center of the dough. Open the oven and slide your baking paper with breads on them onto the baking stone. Optionally spray the loaf slightly with water as well as the oven walls and door. Close the door immediately. Bake at 250 degrees Celsius or 480 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes and 220 degrees Celsius or 428 degrees Fahrenheit for another 15 minutes. Behold your crunchy, chewy baguette babies. Let them cool down before slicing, revealing a beautiful crumb, light yet chewy like a real baguette should be. Butter it up and sprinkle with this. It's the next video, so subscribe. Relatively big bite and simply enjoy. But one thing to remember, you can't make a really good French baguette if you don't have a sourdough starter, which is why you need to go and watch this video, which will show you exactly how to do that. Thanks for watching. Until next time, love you long time. Bye bye.